In this video, I'm going to talk about the physics of banked curves. But first, I want to talk about how a car is able to go around a curve in a road when the road is actually flat. Well, whether the road is flat or angled, we know that if something's moving in a circular path at a constant radius of curvature, if we add up all the forces on the object, the sum of the forces has to point towards the center. Well, if the road is flat, we know gravity's pulling down on the car, the normal force of the road is pushing up, and the force that is pointed towards the center is the frictional force. So the frictional force is what allows a car to follow a curved path or not just move in a straight line. If we took that frictional force away, imagine we had a patch of ice. The car's going around a curve and it hit a patch of ice and friction was negligible. If that frictional force went away, then the sum of the force would be zero. The normal force and the gravitational force cancel each other out and it's just gonna move at a constant velocity, meaning a constant speed and a straight line. So that car would essentially just fly off of the road in the direction that it was traveling right before friction went away, tangent to that circular path. So if there was no frictional force on a flat road, a car couldn't actually follow a curved path. It couldn't change its direction. Well, it actually could if that road was actually banked. So if the road was angled, it wasn't flat, even if there was negligible friction, that car could actually follow a circular path at a constant speed. And we're going to talk about the physics of how that's possible and how do we solve a quantitative problem related to bent curves or even a symbolic problem. Where we're developing an expression for an answer. So it all has to do with the fact that what changes is the direction of the normal force. The normal force, remember, is always perpendicular to the surface that's doing the pushing. So in this case, the, the ice surface would be pushing up perpendicular to whatever the angle of the banked curve is. And we know gravity pulls straight down. So let's look at a specific quantitative problem first. So let's say a 1,000 kilogram truck is turning left while moving on an icy banked curve at a constant speed, as shown in the diagram. Assume the truck's vertical position is constant. So it's not moving up or down, it's maintaining the same height. So the truck is moving at a horizontal circular path and we're gonna assume friction is negligible on this icy road. The banked curve makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal and has a radius of curvature of 50 meters. So the question is, at what speed would the truck be able to follow a circular path at the constant radius of 50 meters on this banked curve? Well, we know objects move in certain ways because of the forces they feel. So the first thing we should do is draw a force diagram for this truck. And we first need to answer, how do we think about the X and Y direction? Almost every other problem we've done up until this point, when an object is on an inclined surface, the surface is not flat, we rotate the coordinate system so the X direction is parallel with the surface and the Y direction is perpendicular. But in this case, is that the best option? Well, to answer that question, we need to answer the question first, what is the direction of the sum of the forces on the object? Well, if this thing is following a curved path, if we look from above, we know the sum of the forces points towards the center of the circular path. And the problem kind of stated that this is a horizontal circular path. The height of this truck is it's not changing. It's going to maintain the same height. And so if we look from this back view, if we add up all the forces, it, the sum of those has to be pointed centripetally or towards the center of the circular path, which is just left. And notice like that's in the X direction. So that means if we leave the axes alone, we don't rotate them, we know that anything going on in the vertical direction, force-wise, has to cancel each other out and has to be balanced. So now knowing that, let's make a force diagram with just a normal horizontal x-axis and a vertical y-axis. Well, gravity pulls straight down, and the normal force is going to push up perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, now it's going to be up and to the left. The normal force is going to have a y piece and an x piece. So there's components in our vertical direction and components in our x direction. And we know that the sum of the forces, when we add these things up, there better be something left over pointing just to the left. So now we're going to make our component force diagram, just trying to see what things are balanced in our y vertical direction and what's left over pointing to the left. So we know gravity pulls down on the truck with a force straight down, and the normal force has a component in the y direction and a piece or component in the x direction. So let's draw the y component first. We've got the normal force or the y component of the normal force pushing up. That's balanced out by gravity. We know that all the forces have to add up and just point to the left, and so anything vertical is canceled. And then we have to still add the x component of the normal force. And when we look at these components and this one force of gravity, what's left over when you add it up is just the normal force in the x direction. 
So it's the X component of the normal force that allows this truck to follow a circular curved path, even if there's no friction. There's no friction pushing it to the left. There's just an X component of the normal force pushing it to the left. So now let's solve this quantitatively, now knowing that the sum of the forces that we know points towards the center or centripetally is equal to the size of the X component of the normal force. Well, anytime we solve a circular motion problem, we're going to want to use the equation we developed in the lab. The sum of the forces, the size of it, has to be equal to the mass of the object moving in the circle times its speed squared divided by the radius of curvature that it's following. But remember, if you're an AP Physics 1 student, this equation is not on our equation sheet, but these two are Newton's second law and the centripetal acceleration equation. But you could just set the sum of the forces over the mass equal to V squared over R, and you're one algebraic step away from getting the equation that we need. So the only question is, in any circular mo motion problem, like this is the equation we're gonna use, but what do we plug in for the sum of the forces that's pointed towards the center? Well, that's what we just talked through. In this case, it's just the X component of the normal force. So the equation we need to solve to solve for the needed speed, or V, would be the X component of the normal force is equal to the mass of the car times its speed squared, which we're trying to figure out, divided by its radius of curvature. So we know the mass is 1,000 kilograms. We know the radius of curvature is 50 meters. We just need to figure out the X component of the normal force. So let's, think, let's look at the normal force. The normal force is perpendicular to the surface, and so this dashed line represents the surface direction. And if the road surface makes a 20 degree angle with the horizontal, that means the normal force will be moved over 20 degrees from vertical. And so the normal force would be here, the hypotenuse of this right triangle. The adjacent side of this triangle would be the Y component of the normal force, and the opposite side would be the X component of the normal force. And we already know what the Y component of the normal force is. It's got to balance out gravity. And if the truck has a mass of 1,000 kilograms using a gravitational field strength of 10 newtons for each kilogram, then the gravitational force would be 10,000 newtons downward. So the Y component of the normal force must be 10,000 newtons upward. So if we want to figure out the size of the X component of the normal force, we know the adjacent side of this triangle, 10,000 newtons, and we know the angle here is 20 degrees. So let's use the tangent equation, where the tangent of an angle is equal to the length of the opposite side, that's the X component of the normal force, divided by the adjacent side, which is the Y component of the normal force. And we know the angle is 20 degrees, and the Y component is 10,000 newtons, so we get 20 degree, the tangent of 20 degrees is equal to the unknown X component of the normal force divided by 10,000. If we multiply each side by 10,000, we get that the normal force in the X direction, or the X component of the normal force, is found by taking 10,000 newtons times the tangent of 20 degrees. And that turns out to be 3,640 newtons. So the truck is feeling the sum of the forces, which is equal to the X component of the normal force, is 3,640 newtons. That's the force left over that's allowing it to follow that curved path at a constant radius of 50 meters. So now let's just plug in everything we know into this equation. So the X component of the normal force is 3,640 newtons. That's equal to the mass of 1,000 kilograms times the unknown speed squared divided by the 50 meter radius of curvature. If we multiply each side by 50 and then divide by 1,000, on the left side, we get 182, and the units are meters squared over seconds squared. And on the right side, we're just left over with the unknown speed squared. So to solve for the speed, we just square root each side, and we get on the left side, 13.5 meters per second is equal to that speed. So if the truck was moving at 13.5 meters per second, which is about 30 miles an hour, the truck could follow that circular path of a radius of 50 meters while maintaining the same vertical height. We're going to finish this video with doing the same exact problem, now just thinking about how we would solve this symbolically, finding an expression for that needed speed rather than an actual number. So this is what the problem statement would look like, right? So we'd say a truck of, with mass m is turning left on an icy bank curve. Um, we're going to make all the same assumptions that the vertical position stays the same, that friction is negligible, but now the angle is just given as theta, and we know the mass is given as m, and it's gonna follow some generic radius of curvature. We're gonna call that R. So we're gonna develop a symbolic expression for the needed speed V for the truck to follow a circular path at a constant radius R on the banked curve. 
with angle theta. And our answer, we're going to only express it in terms of m, r, theta, and g being the gravitational field strength. Well, all the forces are still the same, right? The sum of the forces that's pointed towards the center is due to the x component of the normal force. So let's just jump into now the symbolic solution. And we're going to start with the same equation. Uh, when we solve it symbolically, circular motion problems, we're still going to use this equation that the size of the sum of the forces is equal to mv squared over r. And in this case, the sum of the forces is just the x component of the normal force. So, you know, we're going to basically rearrange this and solve this for v. And we're allowed to use m. We're allowed to use r. So the only thing we need to substitute in for before we rearrange it and find an expression for V is the X component of the normal force. So let's now use that same diagram as before, except now the normal force is an angle theta over from the vertical and the Y component of the normal force, it's still the same size as gravity, but symbolically gravity is just M times G, the truck's mass times the gravitational field strength. So F N Y, the Y component of the normal force is equal to mg, which is gravity. So let's use the tangent equation to find an expression for the size of the normal force in the x direction, right? So if we multiply each side by f and y, it moves this over here, cancels out on the right side, and we get that the x component of the normal force is equal to the y component of the normal force times the tangent of theta, and we said the y component of the normal force is the same size as gravity, which symbolically is m times g, mass times gravitational field strength. So the x component of the normal force is just mg tangent of theta. This represents symbolically the size of it. And we're allowed to use m, we're allowed to use g, and we're allowed to use theta. And of course, sine, cosine, and tangent, those are all allowed in symbolic expressions as well, even though it's not stated in the problem statement. So now let's plug this in for the x component of the normal force. So we get mg tangent of theta for the x component of the normal force is equal to mv squared over r. And notice there's an m in the numerator on both sides of the equation. So let's divide both sides by m. That cancels out. And then I'm going to multiply r over here. So we get r times g tangent of theta equals the square of the velocity. And if we, so if we square root both sides, so we can get a, an expression just for the velocity or the, the speed needed to maintain a constant height, we get that the needed speed and expression for it is equal to the square root of the radius times the gravitational field strength times the tangent of theta. I hope this has been helpful to help you guys think through the physics of banked curves, whether you're solving something quantitatively or symbolically.